Hey friends, welcome in, have a seat. Uh, today for OnlyPants, we're gonna have a little coffee, a little talk. Jokes aside, we're doing our first Michelin three-star uh, recipe. I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna be making Thomas Keller's Coffee and Donuts from the French Laundry. It's a cappuccino semi fredo topped with steamed milk, and then it's gonna have a fried cinnamon sugar donut to dunk in it. So it's gonna be kind of like a, a nice contrast of textures, temperatures, because the semi fredo is cold. Uh, there's quite a bit of rest time uh, for the elements in this, which is why we're doing this on YouTube today. Typically, we stream these cooking uh, segments live on Twitch. So the link will be down below in the description if you want to catch something like this live. We always welcome new homies in, uh, but let's get to it. We're going to start with the cappuccino semi-fredo. So let's get to it. So we're going to start by separating some eggs. These are five eggs that I pasteurized in my sous vide. But we're going to start by separating two of the eggs, the yolks and the whites, and then we're just going to need three yolks from the rest of the eggs. Uh, I guess, I guess if you are rich enough to be eating at a Michelin three-star restaurant, you don't have to worry about salmonella. You got the health care, you're fine. All right, there's our two. I broke the yolk. There's a little bit of white in it. I'm not going to worry too much. All right, so next we're going to split a vanilla bean. It says we need half. If you've ever purchased vanilla beans, you know they are far too expensive to be tossing half out. I don't know how to store a bean once it's split open without it drying out. We're going to do the whole bean. We're going to do the whole bean. To be honest, I got these beans off of Amazon. I don't know how good they are to begin with. And too much vanilla has never hurt anything. So that's going to be our first deviation from this recipe. So if things get, like, messed up later, just, just like bookmark this tell me i need to come back to this segment and start pointing out what i did to screw things up we'll keep it in mind but let's start with our vanilla bean all right now the pods the part we scraped still has a little bit of bean stuck to it. Uh, also, is not called for in this recipe. Do not throw them out. Again, these are expensive. You want to get every little bit of deliciousness out of it. So what you could do is you could set aside some sugar, put the spot, uh, the spent pod in there with the sugar, and let it sit for a while. You got some vanilla scented sugar. You can also soak it. I don't know the ratio, you would have to Google this. You could soak it in alcohol and make your own vanilla extract. Just, just some suggestions. Uh, I also believe you could dry them out and grind them up and then use it in place of vanilla extract. Have not tried that myself yet, so don't hold me to that. All right, so we have our KitchenAid here with the whisk attachment hooked up. We're gonna actually put all of the egg yolks in. I did not need to separate the two and the three, but it's okay, we'll just wash another bowl. So, we're gonna whip these with sugar. I like to put the yolks in first because if you pour the sugar, it just kind of sits underneath. The whisk attachment doesn't always get it great. So to our egg yolks, we're gonna add a fourth of a cup of sugar and then an additional two tablespoons. Get that in there, try to get it in the yolks. And here are our two tablespoons. Now we're gonna add our vanilla bean that we scraped out. So now we are gonna mix this on medium speed for 12 minutes. Let me set a timer. So we're going to transfer this to another bowl. Oh, that looks gorgeous. That texture, though. We're going to pop this in our ice bath. Don't let it spill over. If it's like that, that should be fine. All right, I'm not going to lie to you guys. And this is the power of YouTube editing. 
I totally could if I wanted to. Totally could, but I'm not going to. We've got an ingredient. But it's okay, because we just had to mix in some extract. Uh, this extract, to be specific, this delicious organic coffee extract. Coffee? A little coffee, a little talk. Let me see if I can get this focus. This organic coffee extract. It called for espresso. Could not find it. But we have to mix some whipped cream in there. So we'll just mix it in before we do that. We're going to make our whipped cream now. So it actually says to do this part in the stand mixer. But we just rinsed that out so it's warm. And whipped cream does better in cold environments. So we're going to do this by hand. I can use the arm workout today. It's fine. We have this bowl that I've had chilling in the freezer. A glass bowl probably would have been better, but I did not think that far ahead. We've got cold, heavy cream. We're gonna put a half cup in there. We're adding three tablespoons of sugar to that, that heavy cream. And then we're gonna whisk it until it is whipped cream. We got our egg yolk mixture, rocking around that bath. We're gonna add two tablespoons of the coffee extract. Oh, this smells amazing. Get every little ass drop in there. It looks and smells gorgeous. I'm very excited about this. So now we're gonna fold in that whipped cream we just made. Fold that in. All right, I think that's pretty well mixed. Okay, so we're gonna add those egg whites we separated at the beginning, and we're gonna whip these until frothy. All right, I'd say that's looking a little frothy. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of sugar, and we're gonna continue to whip it. All right, we got our soft peaks. So we are going to fold this back into our semi-fredo mixture. All right, so now we're going to put that mixture in, it says six to eight coffee cups. No, six, eight to 10 ounce coffee cups. A little bit of a difference there. Uh, we're gonna, we're just gonna start filling and see how many we get out of this. Yeah, this is not getting six cups. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> we'll get maybe four. <laughs> maybe four. We spilled a little bit too. That also probably didn't help. Gently tap them to kind of even out the mixture. I mean, the inside probably doesn't matter that much. Again, we're gonna be putting steamed milk on top of it, but try to make it nice for presentation's sake. This is a, a three Michelin star recipe. There we go, I will get you a closer view. They look and smell delicious. I'm quite excited for these. Hopefully the donuts come out just as good. We have a visitor here, as you can see, who is begging. So I think he approves of these as well. All right, so now our cups with the semi-fredo need to be covered in plastic wrap and frozen for at least six to eight hours to overnight. So we're gonna be doing overnight. We will continue this tomorrow. Uh, we will have to do some donut dough in a little bit. So that will happen today. That'll be later on the video. But for now, I'm gonna get these in the freezer. 
And right now we're done with the semi fredo for today. All right, it's time to work on our donut dough, or at least the first element of it. It is still day one. It got very cold, so I put a hoodie on, but still the same day. Uh, we're going to start. This is our next deviation for the recipe. So once again, if this doesn't come out right, remember this time. Time stamp it. Send it to me. Be like, you keep deviating from it, and that's why I got botched. Thomas Keller says to use a half ounce of compressed Fresh yeast. I have never once seen fresh yeast for sale. Never. So we will be using instant yeast. Uh, definitely not the same thing, but I found a calculator online that converts it. And they say we need about 1.75 teaspoons of this. So much less instant yeast compared to the fresh yeast. So we're going to move over to the mixer. And uh, we're going to start by making... What he calls a sponge. We'll see, we'll see how it comes out. We're gonna add one quarter cup plus one tablespoon of room temperature water. And then we're gonna add half of our yeast, so a little under one teaspoon. And then we're gonna mix to dissolve it. We're not gonna let it sit, which <laughs> that is way too little liquid. So we're gonna do this manually, it's fine. like a very milky cup of coffee so we're gonna add in now a half cup of flour and then on low let this go until everything is incorporated all right we're gonna we're gonna have to start mixing this by hand, I think. It's such a little amount. Let's just mix until ingredients are incorporated, which kind of looks like this. So we might be good. I just wanna make sure there's no dry bits of flour at the bottom. It doesn't look like it, it's very sticky. That's to be expected. So he says to transfer it to a bowl. He doesn't specify to oil it. We're gonna oil it. Gonna use non-stick spray. Get it in there so our dough doesn't stick. That's probably too much. What we could do is take a, a napkin and just spread it around a little bit. As I said, very sticky. Kind of jiggle it off. We're going to cover this with a towel and let's sit for two hours. I'll see you guys in two hours. We'll continue this dough. All right, it's two hours later. Our sponge that we made before has doubled in size. So we're going to finish off this dough so it could sit overnight in the fridge. And tomorrow we actually get to enjoy all this. All right, so we got three quarters a cup of flour here. Add that in. We're adding our three tablespoons of sugar now. And that's one teaspoon kosher salt in there. Mix this together quick by hand, real, real quick like. Just under a teaspoon of that yeast mixed with two tablespoons milk that's at room temperature. This is our next deviation. We're using almond milk. The recipe calls for whole milk. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. So we're gonna add that in there. Then we're gonna add three egg yolks. Scrape the bowls, get them all off. We're going to add two tablespoons melted butter. And now we're going to mix to combine. 
again. Scrape down the sides, get all that flour in there. So now we're gonna add our proved sponge. Still very sticky. So this is a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of flour we're adding in. So we're gonna start at low. Again, a lot is sticking to the sides. All right, hopefully that works a little bit better for us. All right, we're trying it by hand. We want to mix this on a higher speed now until it forms a ball. Alright, it's been going for the five minutes the recipe called for. It is, it is ball-like. I wouldn't say it's one cohesive ball. It's spherical. It's orb-like. We love orbs. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this in a greased bowl, uh, cover it up, and then we're gonna pop it in the fridge for overnight. We've got a glass bowl here. We're gonna spray again with that ham canola oil. This is my go-to proofing bowl. I always put dough in here. I don't know why. It's just my thing. We're gonna spray it. Pretty, pretty liberally. We don't want the dough to stick. I was say we're lucky it might just pop right out. Oh, we got most of it. Right, so, with freshly washed hands, we're gonna get the last bits of dough off the hook. It's actually not too sticky feeling. Like, I don't think this dough is going to be too hard to work with, which is beautiful. It's covered tightly with plastic wrap. It doesn't say anything about spraying the wrap. Uh, so I think, I think we should be good. All right, and there we go. That's it for today. Uh, it's been a bit of a process. We got more to go tomorrow. But I will see you guys then. We're going to fry up some donuts. We're going to steam some milk and put the whole thing together and enjoy it. Okay, it's the next day. We got our dough out of the refrigerator. It's not proofed as much as I expected, but it's all right. We got one more proof left, so I still, still do not think we screwed this up too badly. But we're going to roll it out and punch out donut shapes and then let them proof like that. We have a lightly floured cutting board here. We're just going to drop our dough on that. Which, since we oiled the bowl, should come out pretty easily. And we're going to roll this out to about a half inch rectangle. We have our dough rolled out. We have a baking sheet here with some parchment paper on it. He said to use a two inch uh, donut hole cut or whatever, something like that, cookie cutter. We're just gonna be using a glass and we have a smaller Tupperware to cut out the, the middles.
All right. So these are our donuts. I'm gonna grab another pan just so they're not proofing right next to each other. And then we're gonna cover these with cling wrap and let them proof for 15 minutes, but they need to be sprayed first. All right, and then we'll set a timer for 15 minutes and let them proof. All right, 15 minutes is up, so we're gonna heat some canola oil to 325 degrees, then we're gonna fry them. All right, so we're heating up our oil. We've got a plate lined with paper towels and then a bowl of cinnamon and sugar. Uh, once they're drained of oil and the paper towels, we're gonna coat them in that while it's hot so it all sticks. Just waiting for the oil to heat up. All right, we're around 325. It'll drop a little when we drop them in. Uh, the recipe does not say how long to fry them for, so we'll start with three minutes per side. So here's our donuts. As you can see, the little munchkins came out in a variety of heights. <laughs> Some of them are quite flat, but it's all right. So the next step, and actually the last step we have to do, is we need to heat up some milk, a half cup, and then we need to froth it to top our semi-fredos from yesterday. I do not have a milk frother, so we're going to try to whisk it by hand and see how that goes. But first we actually have to heat that milk up, so that should go pretty quick.
So we have a half cup of uh, plain, non-sweetened almond milk there. We're just going to heat that up, and then we're going to pour it back into a glass measuring cup and whisk it until it's frothy. Alright, so here's our heated up milk back in the measuring cup. We're just going to whisk it until it starts getting frothy. Alright, we're trying one more thing before giving up. Doing an electric handheld whisk, and we'll see how that goes. Alright, so we got our donut with one of the donut holes. Got some of this frothy, frothy steamed milk on top of the semi fredo. All right, and there we go. All right, let's taste this. I'm pretty excited. Uh, the semi-fredo is straight out of the freezer, so I don't know if it's really dunkable consistency for the donut yet. I'm going to try to get some of that milk in there, mix it up. Try that first. Does anyone know if Thomas Keller is married? Cause this is this is phenomenal. This is like the best coffee ice cream. All right, we gotta get in there with the donut. I'm speechless. I'm just gonna keep eating. This is so much better than I had hoped for. And I had high hopes for this. The dough, I think, is a little underproofed. I'm not even mad. I'm literally not even mad. Hmm. I'm gonna eat this whole thing in front of you guys. If you watch my streams, you know I never do that. I hate eating on camera. But we're gonna we're just gonna get that donut nice and soaked in there. Last bit of donut, and then I only have the little little munchkin left. Mm. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> now we got our munchkin. Here, let me. Getting that munchkin all nice. Soaked up in that semi fredo. There are no words. Highly suggest trying this recipe. Thank you guys so much for, for hanging out for this. If you do enjoy this format of Only Pans, please drop a like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments because we usually do this on Twitch. But it's nice to be able to do a multi-day recipe that I normally can't live stream because I don't do long ass streams. I don't have the energy for that. So if you like it, let me know. We will, we will do more of these. Uh, the link to my Twitch is down below. You can catch me cooking live there. And uh, thanks. This was, this, was, this was so worth it. I'm, I'm like dumbstruck right now. I'm just going to sit here and eat my semi-fredo and be happy.
But I hope everyone has a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.